All right. Uh, something we have to do now is I get to write down things that you say that would make a great title. I'm going to read them back to you. You pick your favorite and that'll be the title for this episode. But I, I have a suspicion I know which one you're going to pick. Uh, what would it be like to be in a place, unabashed, <laughs> unabashed world builder's disease, mm -hmm. make your own aspects, mm -hmm. draw another card, who knows me, a revelation for me. Hmm. I really well, what like about the, do the thing. Oh, uh, do the thing is a good one. Unabashed world builder's disease, I think would be, those two would be That's, my top. Well, the only reason I didn't say or didn't pick do the thing was because Angel had a, Angel Martinez had a title very similar to that. Mm. Oh, okay. Couple, yeah, that a works. couple years ago. I think unabashed so, world builders disease. I think both fits me and fits journey pretty well. So I like I like it. This is Written on the Edge. I'm Vance Bastian here with my co-host, S.A. Baz Collins. Hey. We're really glad you're here with us. Our guest today is Luke Miller. Luke is a writer, game designer, and software developer who lives in sunny California with his fiancée, Roman, and their two corgis, Luna and Sol. He has had a lifelong passion for fantasy and science fiction and has recently discovered a love for tabletop role-playing games. After exploring the world of those tabletop games as a player and game master, Luke was struck by the game design bug and quickly jumped into the creation of his first game, Journey. Through this process, he learned many lessons on what to do and, more importantly, what not to do. In addition to designing his next games, Luke is writing content on the Grey Castle Press Journal, where he talks about running tabletop games, concepts in game design, writing fiction, and more. Luke, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's uh, good to be here this morning. Our pleasure. So how did you get your start in writing? Um, I have been, I have been writing and dabbling in writing since I can remember. I remember being super young and in band in elementary school and taking a, a story I had written on one of those little spiral bound things, uh, notebooks uh -huh. to my band teacher being like, look what I wrote. And she was very like, oh, this is very interesting, Luke, because it was very like fantasy very basically taking a video game and putting it into this little story. And she was like, Oh, this is, this is really great. But um, I've been reading since I was very young and I've been a voracious reader. So I feel like for me being able to take the, take the, that split that script and actually write stories has always been really exciting. Excellent. And you said your recent uh, convert to tabletop games. Mm -hmm. How recent? Uh, the pandemic, actually. I right. I had been interested in tabletop role playing games for a while, and I've I've been one of those um, one of those recent converts to the hobby where I feel like I've learned about it online. I don't have a lot of resources locally that I know of for playing in person, and so I I got bit by the bug and I got really excited about it for a long time, especially the like the dungeon master like world building side of things. Mm -hmm. And then just sat being excited about it for about a year because <laughs> I couldn't figure <laughs> out where to go. Um, and then it just so happened that right as the like lockdowns were happening last March, I was in a discord for this matchmaking service. And this one person chimed up and she said, hey, I'm, I'm running a game for new players. And do you d does anybody want to join? And so I messaged her and I was like, yeah, sure. And then I happened to find the best online group. And I've been playing with them ever since. We we ran one campaign in Dungeons and Dragons that she ran. Um, I've been running a campaign for them now for the last six months or so, and it's nice. been it's been wonderful. I I've heard horror stories about playing uh, tabletop games online, and it uh, did not work out that way for me. Great, luckily, I'm I'm very grateful. <laughs> Excellent. So you brought these skills together mm -hmm. and started a project called Journey. Let's tell people about it. 
Yeah, so I have had a kind of a world building process in my head since I was since I can remember of really sinking in and um, using kind of that mental and the imagination, the visualization to imagine what it would be like to be in a place. And I know that that's not necessarily an uncommon practice, but I've always had this very regimented way of doing it of, of OK, I'm going to go into the shoes. Who, who, who am I in this world? Say I was writing a fantasy novel and there's a city and I, you know, I've seen some places in the city. Maybe I haven't explored like if there's a castle in the city and I, I really want to know more about this place, whether it's pre prepare, excuse me, preparing for having this be a scene in the book or to be a, a, a more featured setting in the book that I haven't really explored. Um, maybe I just want to know more because I have unabashed world builders disease and I want to know everything about a place. Even if there is zero chance that it's ever going to come up in the book, I need to know the intricacies of the economy. I need to know what this town across the continent looks and acts like and who the people are there, even if I'm never going there, um, which is probably why uh, my various novel projects have not been published yet. Um, it does not help. Uh, but I, I, I had been... Um, playing with ways to, how can I share this process? Like, I know I've talked with people about it and they're always like, well, that's interesting. But then there's the question of how do I take this thing that makes so much sense in my brain and put it out into the world in a way that makes sense that somebody can pick up and say, yeah, this is amazing. I, I, I understand now and I can use this. And after being kind of in the tabletop world for a little bit and seeing just the there's a huge number of games and kind of games uh, that are out there. And after dabbling in solo role playing games for a little while, where it's more of a creative experience and very imagination based, um, I thought, you know what, I could probably codify this whole process into something like a game where I could sit down as a single player, I can flip through this book and it's going to walk me through this process of visualization that allows me to know more about the place that I'm interested in. It's great. So it oh, yeah, go ahead. So it's more of a workbook and less of a choose your own adventure. It's it's kind of both. It's it's okay. interesting where and it's it's very open ended. So when it comes to a process and journey, you're you're going to walk through the process of like determining where you're going to be and what physical form are you going to take in this place. And by using a series of, of dice rolls and playing card draws, it introduces a little bit of randomness. Um, and you can figure out what is the thing I'm going to look at, which I call a waypoint. So in your journey, you have a number of waypoints you'll stop at. And then at each waypoint, you're going to explore different aspects of that thing, whatever that thing might be. Maybe it's a, a in a city, a historical waypoint where you find yourself at a memorial for a battle. Or maybe it is an individual waypoint where you've met a specific person in the city. Um, and what that thing really is, the identity of that thing past the type of waypoint that it is, is really up to you. And it allows you to kind of, maybe it's the first thing you think of, or maybe it's something specific you're wanting to know more about about a thing. And then once you're there, you go through the process of traveling through your setting, kind of in your, in your imagination and seeing what that might be like. And then once you're there, you're drawing playing cards and it gives you a list of different aspects of a thing. So for a historical waypoint, it might be information about how the people in this setting feel about this thing. What do, what do people in this area, how do they relate to this historical waypoint? Or what is the inciting event that caused this thing to be historical? Um, and they're pretty open-ended prompts and suggestions to say, you know, what comes out of your brain? I, I I didn't want this to be something that was like a just a random table generator that is like, oh cool, I have this thing and it looks like this and fill in the blanks. For me, I wanted it to be a, a process that guides the player through this creative space and gives them, you know, some prompting and kind of gives them that fertile field of, okay, I've got some inspiration that I maybe I didn't have before, I'm, or I'm looking at this thing from a different angle than I've looked at before, um, and then to go wild with it. And from the people that I've talked with that have played it, um, both gamers and writers have gotten a lot out of it. And it's, it's helped, um, which is, is exactly what it did for me. It's, it's helped me break down some mental blocks and say like, well, okay, this thing is kind of a nebulous, mysterious thing. Um, and then to get past that and just use this process to kind of break through and then be like, oh, have that aha moment of like, oh, this is really cool. Now this thing is no longer a scary roadblock for me. It's an exciting thing that I want to explore more. Right. 
So I have two thoughts. Mm -hmm. One on your uh, chronic world building. Sometimes it's the best authors in the world have that all in their heads, even if it never makes it to the page mm -hmm. because the nuances will still be there. Mm -hmm. And so that I love. But two, the prompts that you're talking about are fantastic because I know sometimes as writers, we focus on one element of our writing and mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'll, I'll choose the romance or the comedy. You know, let's say for me, it's kind of more the comedy. I'm snarky, dry wit comedy. Mm -hmm. um, I sometimes forget about the economics of a place. Mm -hmm. And so what you're offering there would suddenly give a level of richness. If, if, if like one of my characters is able to make a joke about the, the falling fortunes of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's, it's, and it's great because like that different perspective on things, you may approach a topic in your, in your world, or you may find just like a little seed of inspiration that may take you down a path you didn't expect. And there's definitely, I've, I've spoken with writers that they're like, oh, I've been working on this thing and I just couldn't get past this idea of like this, this transportation in my city. And it ended up by, by getting in and, and kind of exploring the system. They put themselves in the shoes of somebody that was going to use this transportation system in their city. And it was this magical thing. And, you know, the, the writer had this concept but they couldn't really nail down the details. And by going through the process, they got brand new ideas for new stories that were going to take place outside of the realm of what she had expected. And so it's it's really cool to be able to facilitate the that imagination and that creative spirit that, that as creators we have, but in new ways that might get a new focus on things. Nice. Did you ever imagine yourself as a writing coach? No, I don't consider myself a writing coach now. I feel like I look at my my uh, Scrivener documents that have so many notes and so many scenes that have written and I'm just like, I can't coach anybody. But when it comes to creativity, I feel like I've got a thing or two that I can share. <laughs> Well, right. bravo Very for nice. you using Scrivener. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, I love Scrivener, and I, I'm uh -huh. sure this is not a rare, uh, a rare <laughs> sentiment. I even use it a lot for uh, my tabletop role playing games. So, as a DM, I've got a ton of notes, and as a DM with World Builders, Builders Disease, I have to know. Maybe my players won't go to this one place in this city, but I need to know what's there. And it's amazing because I'll have that up while I'm running our games, or while I'm writing, or while I'm doing other things, and everything is just right there, and I love it. I'm a, mm -hmm. I'm a bit of an organizational freak too. <laughs> now, as I was paging through your site, did I see there was an add-on to Journey? Yeah, so I had been kind of collecting other uh, aspects. So so you've got these different waypoints and there's lists of aspects that you're drawing cards. And so based, because it's a standard deck of cards, um, you're kind of limited in that initial set. And so what I really wanted to do was provide something that expanded that a little bit. And so I've got a, a supplement that's expanded aspects and essentially it's new lists for all of the different waypoint types. Um, and so if, you know, folks have played through Journey a couple of times and they think, oh, you know, it'd, it'd be nice to throw something new in here. You can always mm -hmm. make your own aspects too, which is really nice. It's super flexible. Um, but I wanted to make sure that I was able to provide something that gave additional uh, utility and creativity into the process. And so I came up with a whole new list of, of uh, aspects for each, each one of the waypoint types. Nice. So, yeah, I'm, I'm looking to continue to expand it. I've got, I'm actually working on a, a new game right now that is, it's built off of Journey, but it's very specifically for the Dungeons and Dragons kind of role-playing mindset uh, mm -hmm. called the Explorer's Guild. And it's this idea that you're stepping into the shoes of somebody who's in this guild. And through these different processes, you're going to go out into the world and there's kind of more adventure stuff in it than there is in Journey where you're actually going to be rolling for things and maybe you're going to encounter stuff. And it's kind of a melding of like a solo role-playing game engine, the Dungeons and Dragons engine and Journey all kind of mashed together. And so it's this kind of experiment that I'm I'm running with. Who knows if it'll work, but it's been really fun nice. to make. <laughs> and, and that's also designed to be solo? Yeah. So and, and these both Journey and the Explorers Guild are built as solo experiences. I've had a lot of people come talk to me about uh, Journey as a collaborative duet or collaborative experience with other people, and they've made it work. It's it's um, an open ended enough system where uh, folks have taken it and run with it in ways I had expected, which is really cool to see people take this thing that I'm like, hey, use this thing and be creative and, and go out and be creative. And then they're not just being creative about their own stuff, but they're being creative about Journey, which is really, it's cool to see people do some other things. So I'm, I'm looking to probably release after the Explorers Guild, 
I want to come out with a couple additional free supplements for Journey that say like, hey, if you want to take Journey and do it as a collaborative experience, here's how you can do, here's how other people have done it. If you want to take Journey and tack on some adventure stuff, because there's other people who have rolled the the concept of and uh, process of playing Journey in with other solo um uh, engines and added some of that adventure pieces back in. And so I want to kind of take that and kind of compile all that down into something that journey players can take and directly apply to the game. And not even just as I can do this thing this way, but as a framework of maybe creating your own ways to play the game. That's awesome. Yeah. It, it almost sounds like you took fan art and made it work. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> all right. Uh, Bez, any questions? No, well, this is not my world, so that's why I've been letting you run it. I'm not a gamer, so you know, I'm just fascinated by the conversation. Uh, you know, I'm like, some parts of it are like, I feel like a rural farmer going, oh, <laughs> okay, you so, know. So, <laughs> so Luke, as a non-gamer but an author, what could Baz expect to find if he picked up Journey? Well, yeah, that's the nice thing, right? Is that you don't have to be a gamer to to be like, okay, I get this thing. This is a process. It it very clearly walks you through. It's it's a game and it's presented as a game, but it's also really a, a system. So it gives you the steps of, okay, here's what you're going to expect. You're going to decide on where you want to explore and here's how that process looks. And um, here's some things to keep in mind. All you need are some playing cards and some six-sided dice, you know, easy, approachable. You don't even have to have the fancy uh, role-playing game dice that are so famously tied to Dungeons and & Dragons and other tabletop games. And it's uh, it's an approachable process for anybody's uh, familiarity with tabletop games. So maybe you've been playing solo uh, uh, journaling games for years and you're so familiar, this will be very familiar territory. As somebody maybe who hasn't played tabletop role-playing games, I wanted to write it in such a way where it was still approachable and it was still something that was easy to pick up and understand. So there's no, there's like playing games like D&D, it takes a little bit to wrap your head around the mechanics and be like, okay, well, I'm rolling this dice now for this, but I now I want to attack somebody. So how do I do that? This is very much just a, a process that it walks you through the flow of it. And it's just drawing some cards, rolling some dice and sitting down with your imagination and, and kind of letting that run wild. So I'm going to, I'm going to specify this. So let's say he's writing, Oh, I don't know, colonial San Francisco in an alternate earth with a bit of uh, magic realism. Would he still be able to use it? Absolutely. I, I that, That's a, a good point. And it's something I meant to bring up before and did not. Uh, it's very agnostic when it comes to setting uh, type and genre, but also scale. So you could have your, your setting it for a session of journey be as large as a galaxy, uh, as small as a single room. And you're, you know, uh, the larger scales and smaller scales, you're going to have to apply a little bit of creativity of what a historical waypoint might be inside of your bedroom. Um, but at the same time, you're able to take those things regardless of genre, regardless of scope and scale, and apply these concepts and find something new or explore something that exists in a different way. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, I feel like works really well with things like fantasy or um, sci-fi, just because I feel like I usually have those things in mind because that's where my brain gravitates towards but it's really very genre agnostic you're not you're not going to find anything in here that makes you think like oh this just doesn't apply to my setting and even if you're something you're like oh you know this isn't really what I'm looking to explore in this setting or maybe this this isn't as present as maybe I want it to be you can always just draw another card and find until you get some additional inspiration on something that okay that fits um, but yeah, I, I definitely built it so that if you have your colonial magical realism in the real world type thing, it's it's still going to work. Okay. Nice. All right. Anything you want folks to know about it that I didn't think to ask? Uh, you know, I I don't think so. I think we covered all of the bases. I, I think mm -hmm. being able to have created this thing and like both know what it is to me and then learn what it means to other people has been really exciting. And so I think my big thing would be when it comes to folks who might be interested in, in writing or creativity in general, tools like Journey are a really interesting thing that maybe not everybody's explored. And there's a lot of, really, even other than Journey, please buy Journey, I would love that. But there's a ton of other really great games out there too that you can experience by yourself or with other people that allow a whole other realm of creativity to open. And it's it, it takes 
things a lot of people do in their own heads and puts it onto paper. And I, it just, it opens up a whole new door of creativity that I've really enjoyed getting to know over the last couple of years. Awesome. So what's up next for you? I know you said you're working on add-ons for Journey. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a great question, right? I, I, now that we are in our, our home and I've got my new office set up, well, mostly set up, uh, I think I'm going to be focusing probably on the Explorers Guild next of getting that game uh, to the point where I can start getting people to play test it. I've got some really good um, people being excited to help me play test this game and, and, and play through it and learn more about it. So getting that kind of on its feet and ready to the point where I can start releasing it to the play testers, I think is going to be the next big thing. Um, I've got, I've got a ton of ideas. And now that I've got journey and now that I feel like I've, I've kind of found this thing that is really like, it's really lit my fire of like, I'm going to create, I want to create tools so that people in the tabletop world and in the writing world can get this inspiration and can try new things. And I, I'm always learning and trying new things while doing it. I just want to keep doing it. I, I want, I've got, Explorers Guild. I've got additional things coming out for Journey. I've got some really cool um, inspiration journaling things for dungeon masters and players coming out soon. Um, and then that's going to be, I think, expanding to other groups as well. Um, I got a lot of ideas. So greycastlepress.com nice. is where you can see what's coming up next. I was about to ask where the best social to track you is. Yeah, it's definitely our website. We've got links to our, our various profiles out there as well. But um, I think the website is, right as of right now, our real base of operations where everything is coming out at. All right. Any final words of wisdom? Oh, God, wisdom? I don't know. I got that. <laughs> I know, right? I, I think oh, for me, I. It's, it's really just coming back to, the, hey, if you've got a thing you want to do, do the thing. Yep. Who, who cares if anybody loves it as long as you love it? And even if you don't love it, you tried the thing. So you'll have learned mm -hmm. something at the end of the day. Awesome. All right, folks, this was Written on the Edge. The Rope Podcast is produced by Rogue Ravens Media. For our disclaimers, links to social media, our listen stations, or to sign up as a guest, visit www.ropepodcast.com. We'd like to extend a huge thank you to Luke Miller for being with us. Luke, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for having me on. This was wonderful. Our pleasure. Now, hit their website and follow their projects because I think you'll find the tools amazing no matter which side of the aisle you fall on. Thank, thank you, you for listening. Bye-bye. <laughs>